Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Project Fifty Two. In this very episode, we are going to talk about four ways to heal a broken heart. So, as you can see in the title, this is something.、Uh, this is probably one of my favorite,、uh, one of my favorite things to talk about. So, if you are someone who just Uh, just hop in or jump into this podcast, and if you experience a heartbreak, this is a great episode for you. So, but if you are not, this is something that you can encourage someone who is going to a breakup. So, when we talk about、uh, a breakup or、uh, a broken heart, it doesn't have to be a romance.、Uh, when a romance relationship ends, it can also mean when someone、uh, lost their loved one. When someone is dealing with、uh, going through a betrayal, abuse, or、uh, stress, first and foremost, I just want to say that in order to heal a broken heart, it does take time. It's not something that is going to happen instantly or overnight. It will take some time, and we have to be、uh, aware of that. And in the meantime, we have to do something that will help us. Uh, to heal in the process, do something that will do something that will help you during the process, and we have to look after our need needs, because because when you are experiencing a breakup, there's certain thing that you don't want to do because of your emotion, and don't follow your emotion, especially in those time. For instance. You might feel like you don't want to eat. You don't want to sleep. You want to stay up late. You want, you don't want to go back to work, or you want to cut off communicate communication with your friends, family, and、uh, yeah, that is not a healthy、uh, lifestyle, especially when you go through、uh, a breakup. And I totally understand that, you know. And the thing is that you are not alone. Heartbreak is is a universal experience. So I'm pretty sure majority of、uh, many many people who's are who are around us they are experiencing a heartbreak in their life. And understand this: the enemy is after the heart. The enemy is after the heart. Once the enemy figured out your weakness, once the enemy get the heart. They will come after you, really, really bad. That's why. That's why there is one scripture in Proverbs say, "Guard your heart," and another another verse that say, "My sons, gave me your heart." And God doesn't say, "My sons, gave me your times, gave me your talent." It say, "My sons, gave me your heart," because you know, once you get someone your heart. You gave them your life, so once when you give your heart to God, you basically say, "Lord, my times, my ability, and everything that belong to me, everything that is in me is belong to you now." So, and at the same time, our heart is the enemy target. So once the enemy get our heart, then they then they can、uh, destroy every part of our life. So be very aware of that, especially when you go through a breakup. Don't give your heart to the enemy. Prepare your heart, sanctify your heart, and give it to God. You know, rely on Him in those hard times. So my first point is that when we are go through a healing process, first thing first, if you experience a breakup. Is that we have to allow ourselves to grieve. So in this episode, I want to make myself clear. I am not going to talk about、uh, the broken heart or losing a loved one or the the broken heart or、uh, dealing with、uh, or stress or anxiety. And、uh, in this episode, I wanted to focus on when a romance、uh, relationship ends. So it has to do with relationship. So I I want you to be aware of that. So as I mentioned earlier, the first one is to allow ourselves to grieve. 
So in in Matthew chapter five verse four, it say that blessed are the blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And the scripture is encourage us to mourn, because there is a promise that we shall be comforted. Comforted by who? By Jesus and by the help of the Holy Spirit. So when when we mourn. When we grieve, it doesn't mean we are weak. When you mourn and weak, the society might say that you are weak. You are not, especially men. Like if you cry during a heartbreak, <laughs> like you will face a lot of judgmental. Like you will face a lot of、uh, criticism. So I do experience this in my life. You know, like、uh, a couple of friends of mine、uh, that will criticize me for crying, and they. It's kind of crazy, but、uh, it's something that is around in our society. So it doesn't necessarily mean you are weak when you grieve、uh, during breakup. It's okay to it's okay to grieve. That is what the scripture is saying. And another verse in Psalm chapter thirty four verse eighty is say that the Lord is near the brokenhearted and save the crushed in the spirit. So the Lord is near the brokenhearted and save the crushed in the spirit. So yeah, that is the promises of the scripture. If the Lord is near, He's ready to hear what's in your heart. He's He's ready, ah,、uh, and beside you. So you just have to ah、uh, spit it out, spit it out, let it out, let it all the anger, all the loneliness, all the sadness, and all the guilt, whatever is in your heart, pour it out to God. He will hear your cry, and he he say there is a promise. You shall be comforted. If you are afraid or tell someone some、uh, some someone somebody else, then at least say it to God. Be on your knees and pray to God. That will ah、uh, you will find. I'm pretty sure you can find、uh, such a comfort in, in in God. And yeah, spit it out. You spit it out. Spit it out will help you in so many ways. Like、you could you could tell your friends, you could tell your teacher, you could tell your mentor, you could tell your pastor, your youth pastor. It will help in so many ways. Even myself, when I go to、uh, a heartbreak, you know, I can deal. I can deal it alone, but I don't want to deal alone. You know, at least my friends deserve to know it, and I would tell my friends, you know, not to ease my pain, but、uh, it kind of helped me in、uh, many ways. So once you tell your friends, it kind of lightened the burden a bit. I would even go up to my pastor and tell them about my experience. So they're the one who will be there for you. They're the one who will be there and speak positive things about you, and、uh, that is very fascinating. So yeah, if you find yourself in a situation, it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to mourn, and it is okay to tell、uh, your friend, your or your somebody your trust, and then、uh, don't walk through this alone. You can ask for help. Ask for help. You don't have to go through this alone. As I mentioned earlier, a heartbreak is a universal experience. Someone who is around you. It could be your family member. It could be、uh, your neighbor. It could be someone, somebody in your community. They experience heartbreak. So、uh, when you go through a heartbreak, you know, ask for help. I'm pretty sure, like, it, uh, like, ah,、uh, one out of one out of two, they experience this. So yeah, so just just go and ask for help. You don't have to go through this alone, and you can share the experience. And uh, yeah, uh, it it will help in、uh, many ways. And here's the thing: if you are a guy, like go ask. Like it it doesn't it, for some it doesn't really matter, but for to me it does matter. I I'm a guy, so I like to reach out to a guy so who can understand my feeling better. But for some other guys, different. They do have like、um, a girlfriend, so they they will talk to their girlfriend, and in some way they、um, they will help them as well. But for me, I、uh, I prefer to be around a guy friend. So in in some、uh, way, it, our feeling 
are kind of related. So yeah, so the, I feel much better when I'm around the guy friend rather than the girlfriend. So yeah, so uh, it just depends on you. So especially uh, if somebody you trust, you could just go to them and say, "I'm going through this," and uh, just pour out your heart and. Uh, they are well, if they are willing to listen and they are willing to give you uh, advice, they'll be uh, really great. And then during that process, during the healing process, uh, create a new habit, learn something new, do something new. Okay, learn something new, do something new. So, uh, because if you don't do anything but stay around, like um, hanging around, it will hurt your pain it will hurt the it will hurt you more okay uh, it will hurt you more and more so instead of like rolling around in your bed and thinking about all the memory you have shared you know do something new and maybe learn a new skill you can do something like do uh you can you can read a book you can um uh, uh, you can listen to a podcast, you can listen to music while driving, you can learn a new skill, you can learn a new language, you can learn an, uh, an art, you know, do something that will impact uh, your future. Create a habit that will impact your future. Uh, yeah, because if you don't do anything, like if you, if you stay around and uh, mangle it with the emotion, it will hurt you more. Because especially like if, if, if you are in a short distance, if you're in a close distance relationship, then uh, in a close relationship um, and not in a long distance relationship, it's, it's going to be different. The sh- the, they say that the breakup itself doesn't hurt, but it's the memory you all share hurt. So, yeah. So when your head hit the pillow at night, the memory will torture you. So instead of instead of uh, uh, dealing with that, instead of letting your memory torture you, you know, do something new. You know, do something new. Like if you in, in, if you talk in the morning, instead of like uh, thinking about all the memory, uh, do something then. Maybe listen to an audio book. Listen to um, yeah, listen uh, listen to something new. You know. I, to create a new habit and it will help you up in so many ways so yeah that's the first point allow yourself to greet just spit it out ask for help and create a new habit in the process my second point is that believe that the best is yet to come believe that the best is yet to come we have to trust and believe in jesus because he know what is best for us. You and I will never know five to ten years ahead of us. I mean, we can plan diligently, but uh, it might not happen the way we intend it to be. And guess what? Jesus know it the best. So in Philippians chapter three, verse thirteen to fourteen. This is Paul. Uh, Paul wrote this, and Apostle Paul wrote this. So he said, "Brother and sister, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do: forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, having word in Christ Jesus. So one thing I do." Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. So, I think this verse we can uh, apply it in our life as well. Our focus is urgently important. And it's hard to live with this uh, mindset. Because forgetting, some, forgetting what is behind us is not easy. Forgetting our past is not easy. But as I have mentioned it earlier, is our choice. We can make this choice to change it or to leave it. And it's better for us to leave it 
and then move on or move forward. I remember the, a story that Pastor Joseph Prince was sharing in, during one of his sermons. I remember watching this on YouTube and he was saying that God know what is yet to come. He know the best partner for you. Because we never know what's on the other side of the door. And uh, yeah, God has, God will get, when God gave you something or someone or when God gave you a partner, I do believe that he will give you the one that will help you to finish your assignment, to work together as a unit, as a team, to accomplish what God has called both of you to do. And uh, yeah, believe that what is what believe that the best is yet to come. Because God is amazing and you never know what he has in store. So choose to believe in him rather than to rely on our own. So yeah, second point is that believe that the best is yet to come. And the third and the third one is don't blame other for the condition of your heart. Never blame someone because you're in, in uh, that situation or in this particular situation. Don't blame your ex. Don't blame, don't blame your partner, you know. Um, I'm very grateful for every ex that, ex that I have in my life. I do believe that they made me to be a better version. And I have, I, I enjoy my time with them. And I do have a, a great experience with them. But I, but I would never say say such a things about them. You know, um, because we once had a good time and we should appreciate that. And I have nothing. I, I'm not offending anybody uh, who who doesn't agree with me. You know, I totally believe in that. Some, somebody say you, you should completely um, forget about your ex. And that is true. I do. I do agree with that. But uh, I think we are. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with appreciate uh, you experience because they were once a part of your life. And uh, you should be grateful for that. Because of them, you learn so many uh, great lessons. Because of them, um, you become more powerful. Because pain either lead you, pain will lead you to two things. Pain will pain will make you uh, bitter, or pain will make you more powerful. So you ha we have the ch choice to make. So never let pain you to be more bitter, but to become such a powerful. Uh, a powerful testimony to bless uh, other people. So, yeah, the enemy will use the closest people to hurt you the most. That is the strategy of the enemy. Just look at the life of Jesus. It, his, his, the last supper was the most painful supper. His, what are his disciples betray him? That is so painful. And Jesus gave Judah... Ascario another chance, but he doesn't repent. What I mean is that it was a uh, pain. It, the enemy will use such a people, especially the closest people, especially someone you trust, someone who know you well. God will use those particular people to strike on you. So be prepared, you know, be prepared and then, uh, Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And never blame uh, never blame others for your situation. Just because you're in that such in this particular situation, don't blame anybody else. Take fully responsibility of your life. Because nobody can come and force you to make a choice. You have every right to make a choice. You can choose to become, you can choose to live victory or a defeated life. So you can choose to forgive other or to become bitter to other. 
you can choose to be rich or be poor or stay in poor. So, I mean, we have the decision. So just because someone uh gave you a pain, someone hurt at you, don't make that, don't let that destroy your future. What's ahead of you, what God has prepared for you is so much more. What you will experience is just a little things. So take fully responsibilities of your heart. Take fully responsibility. And, and, uh, Yes, we have to take uh, responsibility. If you don't take a responsibility, nobody is going to come and take that responsibility. It's you yourself. You had to pick it up. You had to pick yourself up. So you, we ha- you, you have to make the choice and nobody can come and make that choice for you. So be understand. And you, we have to understand that, my friend. So yeah, don't blame, don't blame your, uh, don't blame other because you are in that particular situation. I th- I think I'm not sure who called this is Steve Jobs or some or uh, Bill Gates or Steve Jobs I don't remember but if you're born uh poor that's not your problem but if you die poor that is your problem because you have so many chance you have so many you have many times to uh many opportunity to get the chances but if you don't get that chances it's not your parents fault it is your fault okay so the last and final point is that surrender surrender your surrender your pain to Jesus. Jesus understand your pain more than anybody else. In Luke chapter 4 verse 80 it say the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set a liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable years of the Lord. So the scripture clearly say that Jesus is the healer of the broken heart. He comes to heal the broken heart and surrender yourself to him. And uh, he will he will heal your pain. He will heal your pain. He is the only one who can heal your pain. So the first point is allow yourself to grieve, and then the second one is to believe that the best is yet to come, and the third is don't blame other for the condition of your heart, and the fourth and final one is surrender your pain to Jesus. So I hope this episode somehow encourage you and give you uh, a healing to those who are hurt. So, yeah, if you know somebody is hurting right now, if you know somebody, someone is going to, uh, some, if you know someone is going to a breakup right now, maybe just send them this episode and and I'm pretty sure they will be uh, very blessed by this uh, episode. So, Yes, if you are someone new and uh, you have a subscribe to my podcast, please go and subscribe to my podcast. Uh, if you have been listening to my podcast for a while, I just want to say that the video version is available on YouTube. So you can check it out. Just type Thoughts on YouTube and uh, you will find me there. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I will see you again. God bless you all.